just working with our company, you're going to get to work with a lot of bright individuals. Everyone is open and, and ready to, to help you and definitely big on advocating for making sure that you succeed and, and reach your potential. Everyone's goal is the same, to make the best products that we can for our clients and, and make sure that it is everything and more that it could be. What's kept me here? Our culture, we're genuinely a very great group of people. Everyone is just always willing to lend a hand. When I have a suggestion or a concern and I voice it, leadership actually hears me. As a consultancy, every person has a role and has something to bring to the table. There's just a lot of opportunities here if you're up for the challenge. Jump on board, be part of the fun ride, because we're going places. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Aspen Creek Grill, we are a from scratch concept with comfort fresh food. You can expect a, a world-class experience on, on a great budget. We've got incredible specials, great service. Today's dish that we're gonna highlight is going to be our Aspen Blue Sirloin. It is again our premium Black Angus certified beef and we top that with the blue cheese crust. Again, everything that we do here is made from scratch and it's no different from our steaks. We hand cut all our steaks in house. So our team back there, uh, it, it's just an incredible team. Everything that they do, they take so much pride in. They put a little bit of themselves into everything that they do over here, especially since it is a made from scratch concept. We want everybody to come visit us, enjoy some great food with some great service. Bring your friends, bring your family, come have some great food, have a great time with us with some of the best comfort scratch food. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Bertner Electric Incorporated provides professional commercial electrical contractor services to Indianapolis and surrounding communities. Locally owned and operated for over 30 years, our knowledge and experience make us the perfect choice for all your commercial electrical contractor needs. Contact us today. Thanks to you.
really making a difference in the lives of our neighbors in need. Can't make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. Welcome back to High School Sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana High School Sports. This is your IHSAA. Hey, Indiana. Let's clear the air about vaping. Glue. Rat poison. Paint. We all know these products contain poisons, like formaldehyde, arsenic, and lead. And these are just a few of the chemicals you'll find in e-cigarette vapor. Let's clear the air, Indiana. Don't puff this stuff. Visit don'tpuffthisstuff.com to join the fight and spread the word. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Ray, where tonight we have a team that's just kind of uh, rising from the ashes in the home side Wolves versus Indianapolis Tinley off a terrific start at 5-1. and one. Jim Barber and the coach Kevin Kuntz our sponsors tonight. Morales Group building better futures one story at a time. Aspen Creek Grill. Why go anywhere else for delicious food? Burtner Electric providing quality electrical services in central Indiana. Boilermaker 374, we're second to none in quality and performance. Clean Slate, inspired innovation that moves business forward. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation 
and everything in between. And the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Watch the best Division Three basketball on HCAC TV, where you always have a front row seat. Well, Providence Crystal Ray has six players, and that is its challenge tonight for new coach Scott Miller to be competitive with a Tinley team that's been beating teams by 30. So let's talk a little bit about building a program like Scott Miller is. And my question earlier in the week to him was, what kind of coach takes over a program like this? <laughs> Someone who loves to coach basketball. Yeah, yeah. amen. And got a lot of ambition. And uh, I think he's got some pieces. Uh, he's just got to build some depth. That's the real issue for the Wolves right now. Yeah, when they first had a call out, they had roughly 12 or 13 players. And then as they got to their first practice, that dwindled. Now they're down to six. They have one really good player that's ineligible. And they're hoping to get him back eventually. But uh, that is quite a challenge to make it happen. And really, when you talk to Coach Miller, he thinks they're a sleeping giant. And in a few years, they're going to be pretty special. Yeah, he's got a lot of positive energy about him as a coach. And the, uh, and he and I think his kids respond to that. Again, it's just right now it's a numbers thing, Jim. I mean, you just, it's hard to win at any level with six kids. Tenley playing in its third road game this year. You see them in the dark uniforms, the burgundy and white just a two-point loss to Purdue Poly earlier in the year. What's even more impressive is the fact that uh, this team is beating people and beating people badly. A lot of people think in 1A, they may be very competitive come tournament time. How do you assess it? I think for sure. I mean, when you've got three kids averaging double figures and two more uh, players that are just off of that mark, um, they're sharing the ball. They, they're a very efficient team. They're shooting over 55% from field goals on the season. That's outstanding. Um, and they're at 40 at three, and they're over almost almost 60 from two. So they score the ball efficiently. They got a bunch of guys who can score. So that's going to give Coach Dillard a lot of options come tournament time. Omar Dillard is the head coach, fifth year, took over just a few seasons back, and not only won a sectional but a regional championship back in 2021. He is assisted by Eddie Hardiman, Keith Coleman, and Mo Evans. His team shoots the ball at 49 percent from the three at 50 or 32 percent, and from the line at 59 percent. And what's really remarkable is that they are not only beating people badly, but they are as competitive maybe as they've been in years. Yeah, it's been a while since they've had this competitive of a team, for sure. They've had some runs where they've had some really competitive teams that have gone deep into the tournament and even won a state championship several years ago, but it's been a while since Tinley's been this competitive. Last year, Tinley, in playing Providence Crystal Ray, won 79-32, led at the end of the first quarter 28-9, then at the half 48-17, but it pretty much turned over their entire roster so there are new players to introduce to you tonight. And as Kevin alluded to, um, the fact is they've got a number of guys in double figures. Damon Von Horn, Jordan Turner, Cordy White, to mention a few. And they've got three others that are close in Adonis Whitfield, Kenneth Lampley, and Henry May, or Warfield, rather. So we're going to see a lot of these guys tonight handling the ball. Yeah, they're definitely going to play, uh, spread it around, and, and, and share the ball. I mean, obviously the numbers show that that's how the style that Coach Dillard wants them to play. They're not a ball, one player dominant team. So that, that would be interesting to watch how they uh, use all those players and get them all opportunities. Let's move over to Providence Crystal Ray, and let's talk about what's important for them with six players, record of 1-7, and seven, at home 0-3. Oh they have played competitive, a couple of games lost by one and three, and I think you had one of the games earlier in the season that was tight, and they actually defeated Central Christian in that game. But you've got – most of these guys have got some talent. Others are trying to develop some talent. Where does uh, Coach Miller go with this? Yeah, he's just got to continue to get those kids playing time. I mean, Dorson's a good, solid inside player. The guards, Murphy and Newell, they're both really good at getting the ball in the paint and making things happen, and he's just got to continue to grow those those other additional starters and then – off of his bench right now, like you said, looking to get one kid hopefully back and eligible. That'll help. But it's just it's a long uphill battle for him when, you know, you're just down that many kids. But he's got the right attitude for it, and he's got his kids, just keeps his kids playing hard, so that's all you can ask. Yeah, keep your eye on uh, Tavier Dorson, who averages 13 points a game, and he is their principal scorer along with Andrew Murphy, who averages 5.3. Our reminder, our mission is to restore respect to game officials and recognize them as authorities on the fields and court, please respect the men and women who wear the uniform. They're a big part of our game. Sportsmanship is everyone's job. Back with more in the pregame from Providence. Crystal Ray in a moment. To you.
Candy with us. You are truly making a difference in the lives of our neighbors in need. Back with the coach, Kevin Kuntz. I'm Jim Barber. Just moments away before Tinley and Providence. Both 1A schools tip off. Busy week for Providence. They'll play again tomorrow night against Victory College Prep at home. And how about Tinley? They'll have roughly eight days off, Kevin. Then they go to a tournament in Richmond to take on Centerville at 1030 in the morning. The tournament starts December 28th, concludes the 29th. It is a 32-game tournament involving all types of different levels and rounds so that even if you lose, you're going to be playing all the way through for a certain place in a tournament. I've never seen anything like this. I've seen it before in my coaching past. Holiday tournaments are kind of a 50-50 deal for coaches. Some of them love them. Some of them don't care for them. They want to use that time to get better. You know, they want to be on the practice floor. They want to improve their team. But I think it's a neat opportunity for kids to be put in those situations. Um, it's just really hard if you end up on the wrong side of the draw to keep your kids motivated to play for a, an 18th place game. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, uh, one of the games, and I think it might be in the lower rounds as we go down uh, to the elimination brackets, it starts at 8 a.m., yeah. which is about time school starts usually. <laughs> yeah, you, if, you've, if you're playing at that point, that means you're probably 0-2 already or 0-3, and, and that's just tough. But that's why some coaches don't care for them. But, again, just kind of depends on your philosophy. But I think they're a neat experience for the kids. We know that Providence, because of six players and uh, mostly inexperience, is really overmatched tonight. So, how can it be uh, respectable, I guess, for lack of a better term? The biggest thing for them is they have to try to do their best they can to limit turnovers and control the pace. They, they, it has to be a limited possession game for them to have an opportunity to be successful. And then when they do get opportunities, they have to finish those possessions. I mean, that's just that's the couple keys for them to stay in it. So it's the Wolves and the Tigers tonight from Providence. Crystal Ray will come back with the introduction to the starting lineups here on Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at IndianaSRN. Can't make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. We never really realize how much we depend on electricity until the power goes out. Get those lights back on when you choose the certified electricians at Burtner Electric Incorporated. Locally owned and operated, we are a member of the Better Business Bureau and provide only the highest quality of customer service. For more information, give us a call today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. 
Hey, Indiana. Let's clear the air about vaping. Glue. Rat poison. Paint. We all know these products contain poisons, like formaldehyde, arsenic, and lead. And these are just a few of the chemicals you'll find in e-cigarette vapor. Let's clear the air, Indiana. Don't puff this stuff. Visit don'tpuffthisstuff.com to join the fight and spread the word. Welcome back to Indiana SRN's coverage of high school ball. Let's go down to our public address announcer for the lineups. So, Kevin, here we go. Starting lineups again for the Tigers. Damon Von Horn, Jordan Turner, and Corday White, along with Andre May and Adonis Warfield. And for Crystal Ray, Elijah Grimes, J.V. on Newell, Andrew Murphy, Jason Morris. Actually, it's uh, Newell will be coming off the bench. Jason Morris, Juan Cabanas, and Taviar Dorson. Home white uniforms belong to Providence Crystal Ray. Playing their fourth home game, a school of 237 students. Opened back in 2007 by the Sisters of Providence. And we'll try to supply as much historical value to this broadcast as possible tonight. Both sides. And here we go. And that'll be the first violation of the game off the tip. Ball caught by Juan Cabanas. It's a natural reaction, but you can't do that. So, just maybe little little early game jitters there, Jim. Yep. Going to go zone to start the game. They traditionally play a lot of zone. Providence does. Good pass underneath and a nice layup made. So good ball movement. Give the basket to Andre May. Two nothing in favor of Tinley. Back the other way. Second opportunity off the bank, and it's good on the rebound by Juan Carbonis. Game tied at two. Keep in mind, Tinley has been blowing everybody out. Little runner for the guard. No. Tip is good. Probably give that to Adonis Warfield, and it's 4-2 in favor of Tinley. Full, full court pressure here by Tinley. Yeah, not a bad start, though, for the nope. uh, for the Wolves. No, nope. a little 2-2-1 two, two, press. Got to get it across and turn it over. Back the other way they come. Turner, good bounce pass in the corner and a nice fake. Back to Turner. That's an open three right baseline. I like the way the Tigers attack the boards. And they move that ball really well, too. They're sharing the ball. Good point. That's Turner for three. Jordan Turner averages 12 a game, has his first points, 7-2 in favor of the Tigers. And Providence risk Christo Ray just turned the ball over again, Jim, against that pressure. Yeah, that's the hardest thing. You give up a basket, you don't want to give up another possession so quickly. We talked about that in the pregame, right? Mm -hmm. they got to limit the possessions to have a chance to, to hang in here tonight. Tigers going quickly inside, and Adonis Warfield has his second field goal. So after a 2-2 tie, the Tigers have seven straight points. 
That's a three right corner, almost banked in. We saw a three in the junior varsity game that forced overtime that nobody saw coming. <laughs> it was fun just to watch it from the studio. <laughs> Kevin Coots, Jim Barber tonight, Indiana SRM with our front row seat from Providence Crystal Ray. And that first foul was on Dorson, and with their short bench, that could be a big issue early. Exactly. This time one and out, that's a good sign. Got to try to limit possession, certainly. And contact at midcourt. Ball out of bounds to the Tigers. So the turnover is unfortunately starting to add up a little bit for, oh, the Check that. Ball is going in favor of the Wolves, and there is no turnover. I stand corrected. Andrew Murphy handling. Right through everybody. Can't get the ball to bank. And here comes the break in Jordan Turner. Turner's got some great speed. It just dumps it off inside. Layup missed. And how about one and out in the last two yeah. possessions for the Wolves? Absolutely. They are fast in transition, though, oh, Jim. My man. gosh, they get that ball off the defensive glass, and they're down at the other end in about a second or two. That's they cool. are. But in their own end of the court, they turn it over. You can see Coach Miller clapping and trying to remain as positive as possible. By the way, he has no assistant coaches, and he says with six guys, Kevin, I don't need them yet. No, that's Six is a manageable number. Yeah. Little runner put up by Corday White out of bounds and ready to throw it in is Elijah Grimes. Got to beat 10 seconds and able to do so and still have possession. Good ball highly by Carbonis. Nice pass inside. Ooh, and missed by Elijah Grimes, unfortunately. Now here comes Warfield on the run. You are correct. They are so good in transition. And Adonis Warfield has a half dozen. Yeah, they are. They get that ball out and get it down the court quickly. And they'll continue the pressure. They've forced a turnover or two off of it. That's a tough pass going cross court. Picked up by Warfield. Tigers come in with a record of 5-1. and one. Again, they're only lost by two points. Nice save by Carbonus, who, by the way, or rather nice save by Andrew Murphy. We mentioned Carbonus, 14. He's a, he's a pretty good soccer player and actually has served as a goalie for Providence Crystal Ray while the soccer season goes on. I like those two sport athletes, especially at the small schools. Yeah. Back to his zone. What kind of zone are we looking at here, Coach? It's a 2-3 zone, and Tinley's putting a guy in the high post and a runner on the baseline, three, three guards around the perimeter. Kenneth Lampley is the one in the high post, 24. They'll swing it left side. That three ball left short. Lampley tried to get the rebound, but good hustle by Jason Morris. Trying to dribble through traffic, and that's uh, a little tough for Andrew Murphy. That'll and be Six turnover. Sorry, Jim. Mm. That's their six turnover already in the first quarter. And yeah, the ball easily goes back the other way. White uniforms belong to the Wolves and the dark burgundy uniforms to the Tindley Tigers. We draw a double team and now try a three from the left side of the corner. Tell you one thing, number five, Andrew Murphy's getting good position inside. They're limiting him to the second shot opportunities haven't really been the issue. It's been the turnovers and not finishing when they get easy looks. Yeah, now they gang up on Murphy, and that'll be an easy layup. But before that happens, I thought I heard a whistle. And if there was, there was traveling. <laughs> it had to be steps, yeah, Jim. Yeah. That's what it had, that had to be the call. We just didn't see the official was out of the screen there that made the call. Tough inbounds pass. They still come up with it. Hands of Jason Morris. Morris then gives up his dribble. To Murphy. Now Taviar Dorson. In the corner, Jason Morris. Not a bad possession so far. Good pressure defense, though, by Tinley. Taviar Dorson, good pass inside. Picked off. Then returned. Jumper in the air. Missed by Andrew Murphy. Tigers right now in a 9-0 run. And they are going to feed the post. I'll tell you what, the zone's forcing Tinley into a lot of three-point shots, and if you're Coach Miller, you'll live with that. That's not a bad philosophy. That'll be a 
Two-shot situation coming up for Damon Von Horn in our first free throws of the game. If you're looking for great food for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or rather breakfast or lunch, check out Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe, specializing in baked goods. They have daily specials and are open Wednesday through Sunday, 8 to 2. Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe located at 84. Check that, 64, 27 Oakland and Road. First free throw good by Von Horn. Second one perfect as well. Now they're man-to-man press. Jason Morris in the backcourt. Trying to look ahead. Now Andrew Murphy. Got to beat 10 seconds. Ball nearly taken away, and it's going to be off of Murphy. I believe without a bounce to the Tigers. Mm -hmm. And we have a 30-second timeout. Today's game brought to you by Wheeler Mission Thrift Store. When you shop, you're not just buying a purse or an end table. You plan to refinish. You're providing critical funds that help men, women, and children get back on their feet. Your purposeful purchase provides help and hope. Be the first to snag a deal. Shop by today at 8640 East 96th Street in Indianapolis. It wasn't too long ago that uh, Tinley was putting up big numbers and advancing deep into the tournament. And again, with an experienced coach like Omar Dillard at 63-45 and 45 coming into this game. A lot of people think that uh, the team in the Burgundy is going to be hand-filled down the stretch, particularly in the Indianapolis tournament, uh, the longstanding city tournament. Well, definitely. The way they can turn the ball from one end of the court to the other, that's going to give a lot of teams trouble in transition defense for sure. They feed the post again. Up with a one-hand shot is missed by Kenneth Lampley. Back comes Jason Murphy. That's a three on the way. A little too long, though. Taken by Elijah Grimes, and we got some contact. We'll be foul on Andre May, his first. Good movement inside. A little up with the one hand. Just missed it was Elijah Grimes. Sophomore averaging three points a game. Here come the Tigers in transition, and look how quickly they're able to hook the ball up as Adonis Warfield. Eight points, Kevin, in the first quarter. Mm. Man, he's, he's running right to the front of the rim, Jim, making it real easy for his guards. They just can throw it right to him, and he's getting a wide-open look. The yeah, double team on Andrew Murphy continues to cause problems. So the ball heads back to the Tigers. Well, it was a good start for Crystal Ray with a 2-2 tie, and now we're seeing what we kind of expected. Mm-hmm. Their defense has given them a chance, though. They're rebounding the ball well. They're playing good defense. They just got to get some conversion on the other end. And again, forcing Tinley into three-point shots that they miss mostly. 2-10 to go, first quarter. Shot blocked. Good defensive play by Taviar Dorson. Under two to go. Quick feed inside. No basket, but a foul called and free throws coming up for Dorson. So you come up with a good defensive play. You're rewarded on the other side with an offensive chance. Yeah, good hustle by Dorson. He did the same thing we just talked about with Tenley. He ran right to the front of the rim, and he just you got to convert those, man. I know there's some contact there, but that's a you get a good, a good easy look like that, man. As a coach, you got to you want to see those converted for sure. And this is the first time that Crystal Ray will step to the free throw line. I have to admire what Scott Grimes is, is trying to do. I mean, he's coached at a lot of different places. As you take a look at the replay, and almost an and one for Dorson. Not many coaches would undertake a situation like this, but uh, I think he enjoys the challenge and he likes the kids. Mm hmm. For sure, it's a, it's, it's a rebuild situation for sure, but he's got the right attitude like we talked about. He's got the right attitude for it. And he was coaching freshman ball at, at uh, Garen. He had 26 kids out. That would be a, that'd be a luxury here, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Also I coached at Indiana Math and Science. He was a 
Bethesda Christian for a while. Been to a number of places, and this is obviously going to be his uh, most significant undertaking. Good pass inside. Like the ball work, and Lampley gets the first basket on a great pass from Corday White. That was a really good inside screen in their zone right there. They screened the inside guy of the zone, and then White just made a great pass to the cutter to the basket. Elijah Grimes trying to get loose, but instead the ball is handed to Jason Morris. 90 seconds to go in the quarter. In the hands of the sophomore, averaging about three points a game. And he gets it back. Some of their shots haven't been missed by much, but now a steal. Taken away by Warfield. Handoff, and a beautiful handoff at that to Andre May for his second field goal. Well, Coach, this is not unexpected, is it? No, it's not. It, we knew it was going to be an uphill battle for, for Providence Crystal Ray this evening, Jim. But And they, they've given themselves some opportunities. They just got to stick with it here and try to kind of weather this storm. mentioned that Scott Miller is without an assistant, but uh, one of his neighbors has got some college experience in Mike Parker at Butler. He was on the roster there, and uh, I think he's hoping to recruit Mr. Parker to help out a little bit. Hope that's not a trade secret. It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> a three ball, first one made. Make it the second one by Adonis Warfield. has got 11. Good-looking player. He is. Providence, Chris Ray just turned the ball over Jim. Uh, Murphy wasn't expecting that pass. He wasn't ready for it. Went between his hands. Really nice penetration there and drop off for an easy bucket against her zone. Andre May now with six. Drives in a hole. That's a basket and one, I believe. Nicely done by Andrew Murphy. Well, you take the small victories when you get them, right? Absolutely. And Murphy can do that. We've seen him in previous games. Mm -hmm. he, he can get the ball in the paint and, and score. He's just It's really hard for them when they can't get the ball into their offense, you know, when they're turning it over on the other end of the court. Andrew stands almost 6 feet, 224. From the Oaks Academy. Coach said, fantastic kid, good shooter. And another look at the and one. Kind of switched hands there. Sweet play. Third free throw attempt, 0 for 3 in the game. Seconds remaining. And on the drive to the basket, unable to convert was Jordan Turner. One quarter in the books. Come back with a second period live on Indiana. SRN. We really focus on modern application development, DevOps, so automating the whole process of delivering your solution, and cloud architecture. It's very important uh, for large, mid to large companies to have cloud partners because you can't possibly have all the talent you need to address the complex ecosystem of the cloud. We advise them on all parts of their business. And then when things are defined and we see a clear goal, Cleanslate also then goes and does the work. We have a team that is very passionate about what they do. We love to solve complex problems, and there's a lot of companies out there that will avoid you know, getting involved in those things, and I think that's why clients like to work with us. Boilermaker Local 374 can offer you a career as an iron shipbuilder, blacksmith, or general helper. For more information, contact the International Brotherhood. 
of Boilermakers at 219-845-1065. The home white belongs to Providence Crystal Ray and the burgundy uniforms, the dark uniforms, to Indianapolis Tinley as we start the second quarter. I'm Jim Barber with the coach, Kevin Kuntz. Well, we saw a 2-3 zone in the first quarter. What do we see so far to start? That was 2-3 zone again. They got the ball into the high post, kicked it out to the corner, and they stuck a three. And Jordan Turner now has his second three at six points. Tinley back in their man-to-man -man pressure. Three on the way. Almost banked in by Elijah Grimes. Got a nice-looking shot, though. That's a tough move there, and somehow Adonis Warfield, who had 11 first-quarter points, comes up with the ball. Swing it to the right side. They have knocked down three consecutive threes. This time it's the freshman, Corday White. And Newell's in the game for uh, the Wolves, too. He should help their ball handling situation. I'm not sure why he set out that first quarter. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But. Sure. Well, the turnovers continue to add up. That's the first three ball miss, but it almost goes as an assist. In fact, Jordan Turner pointed to the shooter saying thank you, and uh, he's got eight. I guarantee when they watch film tomorrow, he'll say it was an assist. That was all part of the plan, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 32 to four is our score. Don't forget the Morales Group is building better futures one story at a time. They have locations in Indianapolis, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, and Lafayette. For more information, give them a call, 317-472-7600. This kid can shoot the ball. Even against an overmatched team, Corday White, a freshman, has knocked down two threes. He's got a real nice-looking stroke. Rebound taken down by... Tavier Dorson, and we have a foul called. Scott, Gra uh, Scott uh, Miller, who heads up Providence, was uh, saying earlier in the week, this is really a unique chance for all these kids to develop, learn how to handle the ball. And uh, while it's frustrating, he said, you know, they just they, they come and they don't give up. And that you have to admire. On the other end, layup for Kenneth Lampley, his second field goal. Yeah, and now they've got to get some help in the backcourt, and Coach Miller uses a timeout to prevent the turnover. We'll take a break with them as well with six minutes to go in the first half. Aspen Creek Grill, we are a from scratch concept with comfort fresh food. You can expect a, a world class experience on, on a great budget. We've got incredible specials, great service. Today's dish that we're going to highlight is going to be our Aspen Blue Sirloin. It is again our premium Black Angus certified beef and we top that with a blue cheese crust. Again, everything that we do here is made from scratch and it's no different from our steaks. We hand cut all our steaks in house. So our team back there, uh, it, it's just an incredible team. Everything that they do, they take so much pride in. They put a little bit of themselves into everything that they do over here, especially since it is a made from scratch concept. We want everybody to come, visit us, enjoy some great food with some great service. Bring your friends, bring your family, come have some great food, have a great time with us with some of the best comfort scratch food. Back to live action. Team in the way uniforms, Providence Crystal Ray, the Wolves. Royal White and Kelly. And look up what Kelly is, and Kelly is an extreme green color. Tinley in the uh, burgundy and white. Omar Dillard's got the making of a very nice team. We will see them in the city tournament in January. See how deep they play. Javion Newell, number four in the game. 
Little contact down below, and we have a held ball. And that favors Providence Crystal Ray. So what can they do offensively to uh, to net some baskets here? Providence, you yes, yeah. They just got to. I think they're. They just got to break the pressure. Number one, they got to get into a situation where they can have a positive possession. Newell got down in the paint there. We saw Murphy get in the paint earlier. They got to go to their strengths. And the other thing too, they just their their guards are having trouble. And and Dorson just went out of the game, but they could run some actions to get him the ball in the post too. The pressure is just causing so many issues for their offense. Juan Carbonis finally gives it up to JV on Newell. That's a three from left in a deep corner. Almost banked in. Had a couple that nearly have banked in. Jason Morris taking that shot. But there's what we were just talking about, Jimmy. Newell gets in the paint, draws a defender, kicks it out. They get an open look. Beat the five-second count. As we near five minutes in the first half. Pretty good defense by Dion Richmond, number four. And they defend man-to-man, -man and they are right up and close. And they just forced a five-second violation. You're correct. They are up in their shorts for sure. They have averaged wins by 30 points or more against their opponents, and right now they're up even better than that. Back to his zone. Go the Wolves. Going to force a three-point outside shot. And with that, ball was knocked out of bounds and it belonged to the Tigers. Located on the city's east side, established some 20 years ago. And that was to improve an area over there, a tough neighborhood. Another three on the way, and that's going to be a foul in which... Andrew Murphy fouled the shooter, and I believe Jordan Turner is going to get three shots. Well, they always say don't foul the shooter beyond the three-point line, but you have to defend them. So where do you lie on this, Coach? Absolutely. you got to be those last last step, step and a half of your closeouts. you got to chop your feet. you got to be under control. You just can't go out there and, and run into a shooter. You have to give him space to land, and that's something that the officials made that a point of emphasis a couple years ago um, about allowing that shooter to have space to land. You just got to chop your feet, be under control. But yes, you do have to be there. Because you hear people and sometimes you'll see frustration for coaches like, don't follow a three-point shooter but can't leave them open either, right? Well, you see, and some coaches teach them to run by. You see that more at the college level than you do at the high school level. But, sure. they'll, but they'll run out and they'll put a hand up, but they'll go by and contest the shot without making contact. He got, his, got his own rebound there, Jim. Jordan Turner got two or three free throws. Tinley, besides, with a slew of field goals today, four or five from the free throw line. And Turner, who has ten points in the game, back to the stripe. And that's just a communication thing if you're not blocking out the shooter. He's got a nice touch at the stripe, doesn't he? It? it does. Good form, good follow through. Well, the free throw shooting for this team, if it continues during the season, is going to be an asset. And coming in, uh, their percentages were well below 60. Oh, what a pretty drive by Javion Newell from Francis W. Parker School 56. Loves to attack the goal, did just that. Well, this kid... Corday White for a freshman at 6'0", 150, is not afraid to shoot it, and he averages 10 a game. You were telling me prior to the game, he's a pretty good-looking player. He is, especially for a freshman. For the yeah, co like coach to have that much trust in him, you know, oh, and let yeah. him take those shots. I mean, obviously he makes them in practice. He's proven he can do it. They beat the press here. Now they get an open look. Back the other way come the Tigers. They will attack the goal and a good block. Inside by Andrew Murphy. A little end-to-end -end action here. And then Murphy on the drive to the goal, I believe, was tripped. Give Murphy credit. Aggressive take. He made, he made them stop the ball, and they couldn't get it stopped. They had to foul him. Yeah. And 
I believe the foul was on Dion Richmond, number four. Here they come again. Adonis Warfield had a great first quarter. 23 and a spin to the goal. Left it short. Came back, got the rebound. And it said it comes back to the Wolves and a foul in the backcourt. And good sportsmanship coming up by Corday White. To help number 14, Juan Carbonis. Juan slipping around a little bit. He was part of the most bizarre play you'll ever see. And Scott Miller and his wife were talking about the idea that it probably could have made Sports Center, in which a bullet pass was thrown underneath the basket and it went off the head of one of the players into the basket. <laughs> now, that I've ne now that I've never seen, Jim. 25 years of high school basketball, that I haven't seen. Yeah. I think it might have been his wife, Jean, that said, you know what, uh, sports centers, they like plays like that. <laughs> By the way, they've adopted a couple of kids, the uh, Millers have, Leo and Nico. They bring them to practice, too. And they grow up in the system. Juan Carbonis has got three today. And we're under four minutes, first half. Nice defensive play again. Yeah. Providence getting the hang of this maybe here in the second quarter. Two really good possessions in a row. Yeah. Maybe on Noel with a handoff. Tenley's been principally man-to-man -man since this game has started. Tough crossover, and somehow Irvin Murphy hangs on to the ball. Now throws up a wild shot. And here comes a breakout. Four against one. Just a super pass from Damon Von Horn. And the layup good. Was that Deion Richmond that got that, number four? Not sure, Jim. I didn't see it. Sorry. It's okay. Three minutes to go first half. Got a substitution. Again, the team in the home white has six available players. Five on the court. They're hoping to have Jonas Wells back eventually. He's ineligible right now. Great kid, says his coach, but uh, got to keep up with the academics. And right now, the visiting team is over the limit on fouls, I believe. So we should be going to the free throw line. As by, by way of the new, I should say, rule, which is over four fouls in a quarter, you shoot twice. Murphy misses the first. What do you think about the new rule, Coach? I think it's uh, serving the purpose they want it to serve. I think it's moving the game and... and uh, and shortening uh, lengths of quarters, especially at the end of the game. Piper Logistics specializes in everything from warehousing to transportation, everything in between. Three services, one solution. We do it all for further information. Give them a call, 317-396-1093. Don't miss a beat this holiday season. Indiana SRN has your soundtrack covered. Let the festive tunes fill your home with warmth and joy. Log on to IndianaSRN.org. Click on music 24-7. And to our amazing fans and listeners, thank you for being part of the Indiana SRN sports family this year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Be safe. Back to the free throw line. Andrew Murphy as a team. Crystal Ray just one of six from the strike. And now to a seven. Against the zone. Shot missed inside, though. Good catch by Donis Warfield. Couldn't, couldn't finish. Now off-balance shot and well done by Javion Newell, who averages nine a game, and he's got four. Been a little spark plug for the Wolves here in the second yes. half. Newell has. Considered to be the best leader on this team, too. Excuse me, second quarter. Another alley-oop. This one not converted either, but they'll get a second. Second opportunity. And on the baseline, up with the left hand and scoring is Adonis Warfield, who has 13. He just needed to get farther away from the rim, Jim. <laughs> yeah. 
And he'll regret both of those misses too, won't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, Really nice set play for Tenley, though, that they run against that zone to get that little alley-oop shot. Yeah, I agree. Opportunity missed there as we are down to two minutes remaining in the first half. That's going to be a blocking foul, I think. That looked like the initial indication, yeah. Uh, and Andrew Murphy. 45 to 10 is our score. Just joining us, it's been all Tinley, a 2 2 tie, and then a run of 22 straight points. This is Kenneth Lampley, who off the bench has a couple of field goals. Another solid, good looking freshman. Yeah, their young kids look really good. Oh, they're going to have a nice team for several years. Take a look at the blocking call. It's always a judgment call. That's one neither coach is going to be happy with no matter what. I love the free throw shooting this game for Tidley. Eight of nine. Yeah, you talked about it not being a strength at the start of the game, but it sure has been tonight. Wow. 90 seconds to go first half. The reverse announcer curse, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. You're welcome. <laughs> that three by Jordan Turner, his third of the game, gives him 15. And for Turner, nine of those points have come in the second quarter. They have half a century mark at 50. Good turnaround shot there. Travion Dorson, his first basket, which is a little surprise. He averages 13, and back the other way we go. These kids can shoot it, can't they? they? Yes, they can. When you when you combine their, their three-point shooting a bit with the, how fast they convert on the offensive end and transition, they're, you can see why they're blowing people out. Yeah, it's been a 29-point quarter, Kevin. That's pretty impressive for high school basketball, that's for sure. Yes, eight-minute quarters. Mm-hmm. Again, Tindley will have a week off to celebrate Christmas and then on to Richmond to play Centerville in the first of a monster two-day tournament. Well, tomorrow, Providence back in action right here against Victory College Prep. I think that was deflected out of bounds off Tindley, yeah. Good hustle by Juan Carbonis in the corner. Ball loose on the floor. Shot just a little bit too strong for Dorson. 15 seconds to go, first half. And we have an offensive foul. Tell you what, you got to give the kid credit for the position we're in in the game, for him to stick his body in there oh. and take a charge, man. I mean, Coach, Andrew Murphy. Coach Miller's got these kids on the right track. They just got to stick with it. And we mentioned earlier, he says they play real hard. you got to admire him for that. You know, Murphy's no small kid at 224 to take a charge like that either. Final seconds, first half. Can he beat the buzzer? So it's Tidley by a bunch at the break. A reminder, Indiana SRN Sports Web TV is your gateway to Indiana sports excellence. Partner with Indiana SRN where success, sportsmanship, meet contact. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. For the coach, I'm Jim Barber. Halftime, let's take a break and come back in a moment. Without the basket, the sport of basketball would just be ball, and no one wants to play with balls if baskets aren't involved. So in this video, we're going to go over the history and evolution of the basket. A little while back, we talked about the history of the ball, so you know where to go if you want to watch that video. This is a basket-only program. 
basketball was invented in the winter of 1891. James Naismith wanted to invent a sport that can be played indoors during the winter time at YMCA, and so he did just that. He created the first basketball hoop with a broken peach basket that he placed 10 feet into the air. Why 10 feet, you might be wondering? Well, there's no significant reason for the sport itself. This was more so a coincidence as he hung the peach baskets on the railing of the indoor running track at the YMCA gym in Springfield, Massachusetts, and that railing was 10 feet off the ground. Of course, that height stuck for the majority of its history, but what did change significantly is the basket. The baskets at or around this time had no hole and needed a ladder to be scooped out, or when they did add a hole a few years later, there was a tiny hole at the bottom that had to be poked out with a staff. By the year 1893, it was time to add a backboard, but the backboard was not invented for the players, it was invented to stop fans in the balcony from interfering with the ball. They were originally made out of chicken wire, so these weren't really effective for bank shots or rebounds. But that didn't stop players from trying to utilize the backboard because on February 2nd in that same year, a box on the backboard was added, and this was used to assist players to aim towards the basket, but the chicken wire was starting to be an issue. So we fast forward to the start of the 20th century. The basket became a net, and in 1901, the net had a metal rim. But the net also had no bottom, so after every shot was made, someone had to come and poke the ball out. And man, what the heck is chicken wire still doing here? Thankfully, by the year 1904, wooden boards became mandatory. And finally, by the year 1906, the grand invention of cutting a hole at the bottom came into fashion and we got the first tangible net with a solid backboard. In 1909, glass boards became more and more common and this newfound strength slowly but surely led to something you may know as the dunk. By the year 1912, we finally got the iconic nylon net. So now when a shot is made, you can hear that crisp whooshing noise with that beautiful sound of a nothing but net basket. Now that's not why they were made, they weren't made to have an amazing noise. This design with the thick knots and the strong nylon just allowed the ball to fall directly in the center and not flop around after a score was made. As the sport of basketball became more and more popular, recreational and even professional sports leagues started to form. And these leagues wanted to create regulated dimensions for the backboard, backboard square and rim. The NCAA and the NBA at the time thought it would be a great idea to have the same regulations. These regulations are a 6 feet wide and a 3.5 feet tall backboard. As for the square, it needs to be 24 inches wide and 18 inches tall. The line of the square needs to be 2 inches thick and the square needs to be placed at the center above the rim. As for the rim, the rim needs to extend 6 inches from the backboard and the front part of the rim must be 24 inches from the backboard which leaves an 18 inch diameter for the ball to fall through. This was the norm for the main bulk of basketball history but during the 1950s it was not uncommon for the hoops to be 12 feet tall instead of 10, even in the NBA. In 1954, the Hawks and Lakers played a game with 12-foot rims, and you can thank this achievement to NBA legend George Mikan. He was so good at the game, the league wanted to make it more of a challenge for him. But only the opposite happened. The shorter players had an even harder time scoring, and Mikan had no problem scoring on 12 feet so the hoop returned to its 10 feet standard. Beyond that point, the hoop stayed relatively the same, but a lot of power dunkers kept breaking the hoops with their amazing dunks. So around the 80s, hydraulic systems were implemented into the hoop, so if they do crash, the hoop would come down slowly. This was a nice idea until a man named Shaquille O'Neal came to town. In 1993, Shaq was busting these hydraulic hoops, so the NBA had to weld the hoops from the base to be even stronger. And now the hoops are almost indestructible, but every now and then, we get some power dunkers to damage these hoops. For example, DeAndre Jordan was able to bend the rim, and Dwight Howard was able to knock the shot clock off of its balance. But beyond that, it is getting harder and harder to break a modern NBA hoop. Maybe Zion Williamson might have the Hulk-like strength to force the next evolution in hoop strength, but until then, this has been the evolution and history of the basketball hoop. Jim Palmer, Kevin Koontz back at Providence Crystal Ray, and because a new rule's been implemented in 
high school basketball this year, this year in Indiana. It will be implemented here in the second half when a team is up by 35 or more. There will be a running clock, and that's the situation here with Tinley up 53-12. to 12. Let's recap the scoring for the Tigers. 15 for Jordan Turner. The junior averages 13 a game, already in double figures. Adonis Warfield has scored 13 in this game. Six for Corday White, Andre May, and Kenneth Lampley. And five for Damon Von Horn and two for Dion Richmond. 53 points and a free throw shooting has been superb in this game. They are at this point eight of nine. For Providence, Crystal Ray is scoring so far. JV Newell leads them with four. Andrew Murphy has three. Juan Carbonis has three. Taviar Dorson has two. Coach, thoughts on the first half of what you have seen so far out of both teams? Well, just really impressed with Tinley. And, uh, we kind of talked about it in the pregame, but they, man, the way they share the basketball and to have seven kids score in the first half and the, the, the multiple ways they score offensively, uh, that's really impressive. And then for Providence, I thought they did a decent job with their zone defense and, and, and blocking out and getting rebounds early. Um, they can come back out and, and, and just – look at this like it's a new game. They're going to have to look at it that way and just come out and focus on the things that Coach Miller wants to see in the second half. Do you anticipate Tinley and Omar Dillard taking off the press? It'll be interesting to see uh, what he decides to do from that standpoint, Jim. Um, if you're Coach Miller, you know, you've got your kids. You just have to look at it as a learning experience. Listen, we got to get better. I mean, let's use this as an opportunity to get better. At some point, though, you would think that Coach Dillard would, would, would take that pressure off and, and just pick him up in a half-court setting. Yeah, certainly the outcome of the game has already been decided. That likely was decided early in the first quarter. And while Tinley has put up some big numbers this year, uh, one of the most recent victories, 87-43, not much is gained, I would think, by a full-court pressure on a team that's really uh, outmanned. Yeah, no, there's no AP voting poll here, Jim. There's No, no sir. There's, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many points you score in, your, in being victorious. So, And I would assume that Coach uh, Dillard would want to look at some of his uh, bench players, maybe some of his less experienced players, too, in a situation like this and get them some action and get them some game time. Last year's score, 79-32 in a game in which the Tigers shot 57% from the floor. Their percentages tonight have been particularly strong because they've had a number of layups and also some uh, good interior passing to the post where Adonis Warfield had an 11 point first quarter. I'm really impressed with him, and he seems to bring a, uh, an element that a lot of teams are going to have to deal with. Yeah, he can get up above the rim, that's for sure. He had a couple of those alley oops he'd like to have back, like you mentioned. But And give Coach Dillard credit. He, they ran some really good actions against that 2 3 zone, some inside pin screens, some, some uh, screens against the top of the zone to get their kids open looks. Let us return with the start of the second half between Tindley and Providence Crystal Ray live tonight on Indiana SRN. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to $17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net. Or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. mentioned earlier Juan Cabanas who plays for Providence Crystal Ray is also a soccer player and a good one at that he wears 13 or rather 14 and he is a goalie in his uh, other job if you call it that and uh, you know I think with the development of these kids and other kids eventually coming out for the program that this is a sport that they'll get to be pretty good at right now uh, it's a, just a challenge to get people out for the team. Yeah, when you're when you have just reduced numbers, I mean, you're so limited in what you can do. I mean, look, think about practice, Jim. I mean, he can't even go five on five in practice. So, no. I mean, he's just so limited. So you're just you're just battling uphill, and and they just got to make sure they come out here in the second half, and just give great effort. And Scott says too, as you take a look at Tinley and Omar Dillard, the fine head coach of the Tigers. Uh, Scott Miller says that uh, I'm tough on these kids. You know, I'm a passionate coach. And uh, because I have this kind of passion, 
You know, it's uh, you see his hands up in the air right now. You know, he's playing this like it's a one-possession game. Uh, that, that'll spread to these kids, and I think they'll appreciate it. It's all you can do as a coach. You have to keep coaching. You can't let, ever let your kids think that, that you've quit on them. I mean, you can't be that way as a coach. You have to just keep coaching, keep working, keep trying to get better, whatever little things you focused on. Back to his own defense of the Wolves to start the second half. Warfield with the rebound. He's had a bunch. Swinging left side, got a good shooter there. Jordan Turner has knocked down his third three of the game. He's got 18. Check that, fourth three of the game. You put two on one wing and three on the other wing. Those two little kids, they can really shoot the ball. Oh, man. Again, a running clock now here in the second half because the difference is 35 points or more. Good block inside. We've got an injured Wolf right now who's trying to play on, and time is going to be called. Looks like it might be Watt Cabanas who's down, number 14. No, I think it's Dorson. Oh, you may be right. And I think he got it right in the solar plex. I, mean, I think he just lost yeah. his wind is what it looked like. It is Taviar Dorson who averages 13 a game, but he has been held to two so far. Still in some discomfort as we'll have some substitutions here. So time to remind you that our mission is to restore respect to game officials and recognize them as authorities on the fields and on the courts. Please respect the men and women who wear the uniform, the officials, as you see one in your picture right now, big part of our game. Sportsmanship is everyone's job. Omar Dillard, what might he be instructing right now at this point? Looked like he was talking about bounce shot fake and what it looked like he was instructing, talking to his kid about being under control around the basket, having a shot fake, going up strong. There's Taviar being helped off and uh, tough kid. Yeah. Not easy playing under these conditions. TJ, as he's known by, coach says might be the best player. And he actually did a nice defensive job recently defending a player. It was 6'2 and 240. And uh, Durison is 179. Got uh, great, he's got great length, though. He's got yeah. nice length to him. There's that little inside pin screen again. Shot missed by Andre May. Three ball on the way and buried again. Adonis Warfield, his first three of the night. He's got 16. And as you mentioned at the half, Jim, Tinley is not picking up in full court pressure. They're meeting him at half court. That's a good sportsmanship uh, play by Diller, don't you think? I agree, yes. Grimes in trouble in the corner. Ball knocked out of bounds. And it appears Dorson's gone back to the locker room. Jim, I don't see him on the bench. Which now limits any kind of substitutes. They don't have any. Yeah. And He may be okay. He may come back. We don't know. But I'm just saying he's at the moment he's in the locker room. In transition, three went in and out and back in. Damon Von Horn, his second three of the game. He has now got seven. Check it, eight. Tough play inside, nearly banked in. And a rebound taken down by Corday White. They'll run the court. That's what they do. And now Donis Warfield says, let's bring it out. And I like this, too, because it's not a – we don't need to attack. It's a smart, that's a very smart basketball play by Warfield. Get, sure. your, get your offense set up, get a good shot. It's also good sportsmanship, too. Absolutely. I mean, you don't expect these guys to go without scoring, as Corday White now has got eight. But at the same time, they don't need to attack the basket every time out. And we have a timeout being called by the home teams. Take a break. With five and a half to go in the first half, it's a full time, or third quarter rather, a full timeout. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. It's violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, 
It's not a game. Welcome back. Looking for great food for breakfast or lunch? Check out Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe. They specialize in baked goods. They have daily specials. They're open Wednesday through Sunday, 8 to 2. That is Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe located at 6427 Oakland and Road in Indianapolis. High school basketball tonight from Providence. Crystal Ray visiting team with the ball, the Tigers of Tinley. Damon Von Horn leading the break. Macy Robinson zeroes in the game for the first time. And there's Dorson back on the court. Oh, it's good Wolves. to see, That's isn't a good it? Sign. Yep. He hobbled off, and he was in some some discomfort. Well, there's Murphy. Gets himself dirty over there, doesn't he? Number five. What appears he might be hurt now. Oh man! Again, they only have six available players. Dorson is re-enter the game and now Murphy is down with four and a half to go in the third quarter. There's Murphy. He's up and heading to the bench. Well, think about this. They've got to play almost 32 minutes and if they do get hurt, you know, it, as much as you like to take another break, I mean, who do you go to? I mean, they're they're down the numbers. Now that's their that's their reality every game, unfortunately. Sure. Macy Robinson on a drive to the goal and lays it in. Make that Mackie Robinson his first basket. All the scoring in this quarter done by Tinley, thirteen points. Now Mackie again up with the ball. We have played four minutes in quarter number three. Oh, good, nice crossover there. Can't pay it off, unfortunately, but offensive rebound to Javion Newell, who has six. Nicely done, young man. Yeah, great fight there by Newell. Rebound his own shot and get it back up for two. And a foul on the other end. We'll have free throws coming up. You mentioned the tournament that Tenley's got coming up, which is a, a monster. They'll face Centerville in Richmond, a 10-30 start on December 28th. And then depending on how they do in the first game, we'll either stay in the winner's bracket or go into the loser's bracket. And you have to be an advanced mathematician, and I admire the person that put the pairings together for all these games. That's, that would be my ideal job. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of work to go into those holiday tournaments, that's yeah. for sure. Let's take a look at the replay and the drive to the goal to put Adonis Warfield to the free throw line. Warfield now has 17 in the game. Sometimes in those holiday tournaments, Jim, it's the first team that is awake that wins in some of those <laughs> early games. I mean, I've been in some of the coach in some of those games where it's the, the kids are just not used to playing that time of day. So that's the key, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Tigers are 10 of 11 for the free throw line. A little behind the back action there. Won't go. And the ball is turned over to Crystal Ray. Because normally your tips times, you know, for varsity game or 7.30 at night, you know, you go all of a sudden and you're t tipping off at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning. That's yeah. that's a shell shock for the players sometimes. Well, what do you have for breakfast? I know when uh, Bob Knight was coaching Indiana and they had those early starts and it might have been Steve Alford saying it was the same same mm -hmm. breakfast all the time, including some type of pasta mm -hmm. at 8 in the morning. <laughs> I've coached for coaches that, that are, they're like that. It's the same pregame meal. Every meal doesn't matter what time of day. Donis Warfield, number 23, who's a senior, has 20 in this game. Two fifty to go. Uh, allegedly a running clock here, although the clock is stopped. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is the first year for the rule. First game I've had this rule, Jim, so I'm not real sure. When you shop, you're not just buying a purse or an end table. You plan to refinish you are providing critical funds to help men, women, and children get back on their feet. Wheeler Mission Thrift Store, 8640 East, 96th Street in Indianapolis, and that's going to be an and one for the Tigers. Kenneth Lampley off the bench has scored eight. 
And back to the free throw line where they have been very, very good. Well, this alone, I would think, is going to allow them to close out some games this year, Coach. Absolutely. If they can continue to shoot the free throws like they have tonight, that is a big, big factor in winning games late. And 11 to 12 are NBA-like numbers, 90%. Good job of Kamanis getting out of trouble there. But here comes another fast break, and it's knocked out of bounds by the Wolves. I think I believe I saw the official say something to the scorekeeper, Jim, on that last dead ball to get the clock started. Okay. So we're running now. I think it still stops for free throws, I think, is the rule. Gotcha. And these guys shoot threes like they shoot free throws. Yeah, they've been hot tonight. Damon Von Horn has 11. And he becomes another double-figure score for his team. 140 to go, third quarter. Ron Horn now with 13. Second opportunity, well done by Tavier Dorson, who is healthy after hitting the ground here a few minutes earlier. Rebound, Javian Newell. One minute to go, third quarter. Jordan Turner re-enters. He has had a solid game so far tonight with 18, and he's leading his team in scoring. Or had been. Adonis Warfield actually has 20. Elijah Grimes, got it by Mackie Robinson. Robinson tried to take it away. Final seconds, third quarter. And that's over and back. Naki Robinson, pass to the corner, and the three rims in and out. Three quarters in the books. We'll get back to business and come with the fourth quarter in a moment on Indiana SRN. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more. Visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at Indiana SRN. Boilermaker Local 374 can offer you a career as an iron ship builder, blacksmith, or general helper. For more info, contact the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers at 219-845-1065. Kevin Coates, Jim Barber, on to the fourth quarter we go. What might we expect here in a game that's already been decided, Coach? Just focusing on the little things here, Jim. You maybe work on something, pick one thing out that you want to try to get better at for both teams. I uh, assume we'll see some different players here at some point for Tenley and, and get them some game experience that could be valuable later in the season. Elijah Grimes nearly got a three to go. Still looking for his first points. Well, this team is ready, aim, and fire, particularly cleanse the threes. And Corday White has his third three, and now he is in double figures. Well, how do you tell a kid not to shoot the ball? I mean, I you know, it's uh... – you, you can't. You just can't. I mean, that's the kid – it wasn't a four shot. 
he got it off a wide open. I mean, he had a wide open look off of a penetration and pass. I mean, he didn't come down and just dribble it and, you know, throw it up at the basket from half court or something silly. You know, he's playing, he's shooting it within their system. Again, that's just a wide open shot. So you can't, you can't blame the kid for shooting that shot. And Turner now has 21 in the game, and that makes him the top scorer. 21 for Turner. Nice save by Mackey Robinson and 20 for Adonis Warfield. This guy is shooting like free throws. Corday White, a freshman, has 14. He has four threes in the game. Good second effort, no chance for a third. Six and a half left. Grimes almost got his first points there. Good follow-up, though, and in for Tra uh, Taviar Dorson, who has six. Dorson at 6'6", 179, TJ with those long arms. Tinley being, more little pa being a little bit more patient on this possession. Right as I say that, they shoot a three. That's all right. That's, good. that's better patience. Good ball movement. And officially, that's uh, Robinson's fifth point. Their threes total something like 13 or 14 in the game already. Wow, that's impressive. Third effort inside by Dorson, and he'll have some free throws coming up again. He's a sophomore. For a big kid, Dorson's got a nice-looking free throw stroke. He had missed two earlier, but now he's got seven. I like the way he goes to war inside. Mm -hmm. You're right. He knocked two down very nicely there with eight down in the game. Well, what might Scott Miller's message be to his team when this game is over? This is probably one that you're – I don't know that you're going to spend a lot of time watching film on this one, Jim. I think you just kind of talk about some, a couple little things and maybe some, a couple things you can improve on and you move on to your next game. Unfortunately, when you have a game like this, that's kind of, you just got to kind of flush it and move on. Corday White now with his fifth three in the game. He's got 17. Because they're not going to face a lot of opponents like this. No. You know, so he, you just got to kind of let it go and move on and get ready for your next opponent. And that next opponent will be tomorrow night. Shot nearly banked in by Dorson. Under five to go in the game. It's going to be a foul beyond the line, I believe, by Andrew Murphy. And that's the second time he's done that tonight. Just goes out and runs over a shooter, doesn't let him come down and have space to land. Maybe I was wrong on the free throw rule, Jim. The clock's not even stopping for the – oh, maybe he – I guess he called it on the floor. I apologize. Yeah, I thought it was a shooting foul too. Not the first time I've been wrong this season. Won't be the last. Me either, unfortunately. <laughs> Three ball on the way. A little too strong there. There is uh, Dorson fighting inside. To Grimes, just beyond his hands. As we're down to four minutes left in the game. A little dribbling exhibition there. Here comes Newell. Strong to the basket. Lays it in. JV on Newell now with eight. He yeah. averages nine. Yeah, real nice take by Newell there. National Honor Society kid, too, by the way. You're always happy about that when you're a coach. Kids that work hard in the classroom, that usually translates to the basketball court. Well, you have some 93 corporations that have helped out these kids, and the plan is to get them to college, and 100% of the kids wind up going to college. 
which is a phenomenal number. Absolutely. So it's part of a work study, if you will. It's amazing. Grimes on the drive, left a little too strong. Our pace is getting a little ragged, as you would expect in this type of game at this point in the game. Agreed. The Morales Group building better futures one story at a time. They have locations in Indianapolis, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, and Lafayette. For more information, give them a call, 317-472-7600. And Piper Logistics, specializing in everything from warehousing to transportation, everything in between. Three services, one solution. We do it all for further information. Call them, 317-396-1093. Tinley threatening 100 right now. And 24 for Adonis Warfield. Touched upon this in an earlier broadcast. How 100 points on the college level is a big deal. Because typically somebody is offering as a business some free food. Yeah, I doubt that's the case tonight, but yeah. I, agree, I agree with you. And it happened in a North Carolina game I had when Coach Williams was part of it. And the game had long been decided. They were up similar to what Tenley was up. But all the kids stayed around rooting the subs on because free food was at stake. And they got it with about 30 seconds to go. And the arena, I mean, it sounded like a Duke game. <laughs> Bonus with his fifth point of the afternoon. Or rather the evening, 145 left. Cabanas, by the way, the only senior on this team. That's a good sign for Coach Miller. It means a lot of young kids are getting a lot of game experience. Mm -hmm. Reminder that tonight's broadcast is a copyright production of Indiana SRN and the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Any use of audio or video without the express written permission of Indiana SRN and the IHSA is strictly prohibited, which means don't do it. Chance for 100 here, and Mackie Robinson will put up three digits. Final moments of this one. Indianapolis Tinley to go to six and one. And Providence Crystal Ray in action tomorrow night will drop to one and eight. 0 oh and four at home. And if you're Indianapolis Tinley with the game never being in doubt, what do you take away from this? I think you have to be real pleased with the free throw shooting because that was not a strength of theirs, so the coach has to like that. And then obviously their three point percentage tonight was, um, was unreal. Those are the two things I think that you take away is you can. When you play stronger opponents later, as you mentioned in the Marion County tournament, uh, or the Indianapolis, excuse me, tournament, um, they'll see some stronger competition, and, and those things, if those things can continue to happen, that's a great recipe for success. Ooh, that's a tough fight. Well put, Coach. And Dorison now is in double figures with 10. So Tinley's going to get some time off. And Coach Dillard's team probably could use the rest, and then on to Richmond for a marathon tournament, which it's pretty much guaranteed playing three games. Pretty much the way that all those are now, Jim. Mm -hmm. All the holiday tournaments are pretty much three-game minimum. That's good to see Dorson back up. I thought that was a pretty tough spill. By the way, coming up tomorrow night, Purdue Poly and Central Christian. You're going to be witness to that. Yeah, I'll be here tomorrow night for that. No rest for the weary. Dorson knocked down two free throws earlier. And the game is over. Well, as expected, Tinley dominates. Winning tonight in every quarter. Coach Miller to shake hands with the opposing players. Same thing with the kids from Providence Crystal Ray. Your heart goes out to them with uh, a one-sided loss like this, but uh, we do believe better days are ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, tonight's a tough one, but there are better days ahead for the Wolves. All right, Coach, rest up. you got uh, you got business to attend to tomorrow night. Yeah, we'll be back for Purdue Poly and uh, Central Christian. For Kevin Kuntz, I'm Jim Barber. We thank you for joining us tonight where Tinley wins convincingly so long from Indiana 
SRN.